everybody, Shane back with you here from Guitar at Work. Shane Simpson back from Guitar at Work. Welcome back. And this is going to be a lot of fun. This is Bob Seger's Night Moves by request. And Rick, I want to thank you for encouraging me to do this song. It's a good one. Always a lot of questions about the strumming patterns in this song. So we'll go through those. Um, you definitely are going to want to go to patreon.com. I've got three sheets here for you. Uh, the one is a details page with the exact strumming written out, downs and ups and the counts and all that. And also there are two pages of the actual song with the lyrics and the chords over top. So if you go to patreon.com slash guitar at work, grab those. It's going to make things a whole lot easier for you to get through. I'll be referring to those the whole time. So patreon.com slash guitar at work. Go grab those sheets and come back. Um, I want to thank you all for coming back and subscribing and thumbs up and YouTube being an awful lot and I appreciate you doing that. Lots of great comments and suggestions, that's for sure. Keep them coming. Uh, happy to answer any questions you might have. Um, so again, Night Moves by Bob Seger. You'll notice right off the bat I am capo one. That's important here. Uh, capo one for sure on the actual recording. So you want to do that. Um, again, lots of questions about the strumming. Um, if I was to take out, first of all, your chord shapes, let's get through those. I think most of us are going to know these guys. Um, this is a, I'm going to use this G. There are some alternatives. So I'm going to use this G here, four finger G. Now, if you like this one here better, the big kid G, fine. That's, that's okay. He's using this guy here. I'm pretty convinced on the recording. Uh, but whichever G you like is going to work. And there's an F chord in there. Now, you can use your standard F, just this guy right here, a little uh, four string F like that. Or you can use a full bar chord F which can be a little scary to get to if you're new at bar chords, uh, or something in between. I'm going to use what's called an F slash C. I'm going to go ring finger here on the C note, on the third fret of the A string, pinky on the third fret of the D string, and then middle here is where he would be for your regular F, and first finger's bar in those top two. So that's F slash C. But again, hey, F is going to work just fine. Uh, you don't want to be struggling with these chords, because if you do, the right hand is not going to know what to do. So for now, use whatever F is comfortable for you, and I'd encourage you to work toward that chord I was just talking about, F slash C, that guy there. On the C chord, you could use your garden variety C like that, if you like. I'm going to use C slash G, which is just a matter of moving your ring finger over one string thicker and putting your pinky in there to replace that note you stole. There's a C slash G, but I'll again say that a garden variety C is just fine to get you off the ground while you're pecking away at those, okay? Um, they can be tricky. If you've been playing your F like this for a long time, or your C like this for a long time, you're going to find that even getting to F slash C, it's going to uh, mess things up for you a little bit at first, so uh, maybe keep that as a separate uh, little uh, project. So I'm going to go G, and then I'm going to go F, my F, use your own, here's a C, use your own C, good, and there's going to be an E minor later on in the chorus, like that, there'll be a D somewhere in there, for sure, I think we all know a D. There's going to be a C major 7th in there too, C major 7th is just a matter of taking a C and removing your first finger, like that, just like that. And so those are our chord shapes. If, uh, if any of those are new to you, or if you feel you're going to have trouble going uh, from one to the other, make sure you stop tape there and get that together. I want to take you through the main riff. A lot of contention about the strumming on this guy. Um, he, I've written out on your, on your details page um, a strum. It's two steps. We'll get you there, I promise. If you try to do everything at the same time, if this stuff is new to you, if you try to do it all at the same time, you might crash and burn. You might be doomed. You don't want that. It'll just be frustrating and set you back mentally anyway. So let me let me take all the accents out and just literally do downs and ups, okay? So here's, as written on your sheet, here's a G chord. I'm going to go down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Second bar, down, up, down, up down. Now here's the trouble. F is going to be on this upstroke. I'm going to go up, down, and then to a C on the upstroke, into the third bar. So that first line again, the first two bars, G. Down, up, no accents yet. Down, up, down. Second bar here. Down, up, down, up, down. F, up, down, C, up, down. That brings you to the next line. Um, so you're going to have to get used to doing what's called a push. Push is when a chord comes in typically on the upstroke. In this case, the F is coming in on the and of three. If I'm counting that out loud, check it out. I'm going to go one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. C is going to come in on the and of four. And one is the next, is the next bar. 
it can be awfully complicated when you're hearing all that. Make sure you're looking at your sheet at all the numbers are marked there, the strumming, downs and ups, and also the beat numbers. So that's called a push when you're coming in on the up. And at first your body will not like to come up, change chords on the upstroke. So I've removed all the accents. He's actually, we'll talk about this very soon, but he's actually got this thing going. This little percussive stroke, don't try to add that right away. That's the second, that's step two. So step one, taking it from the top, G. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Second bar, down, up, down. Uh, there's an F on the up, up, down, C on the up. Third bar, two, and three, and four, and down, up, down. Here's an F on the up right here, up, down. Now G on the up, that's the very last uh, up stroke of the two bar of the two four bar phrase and we're right back to the very beginning so you change on that g on the last upstroke okay so let's go slowly through it again slowly three four down up down up down up down up down up down here's an f on the up up down c on the up third bar two and three down up fourth bar down up down f on the up G on the up, and then you're at the, at the very top again. Now when you're changing, especially at the end of that uh, second line, you're changing to the G on the last possible upstroke. You might lose track of where beat one is. I've seen that many, many a time. You may lose track of beat one uh, because you're changing on the upstroke, okay? So that might take a little bit of practice. We're gonna do a, a big play along here for the main riff and the chorus anyway. A play along so you can play along and know exactly where things might be going right and where things maybe are going a little bit wrong too. I'm gonna go round and round on that right now, very slowly. I'll try to shout them out as I can. Jump in, here comes your G3. Three, four, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Second bar, F on the up, up, down, C on the up, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Fourth bar, down, up, down, F on the up, up, down, G on the up. Repeat there, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two. F on the up, up, down, C on the up, one, and two, Fourth bar one and two and F on the up and G. Good. Let's let's take it again. Give you a break there. Hopefully that's going well. You may have to stop tape right there. Just stare at your sheet and get it going. It's a little bit like doing this stuff or whatever it is. You know what I mean? We can edit that out, right? <laughs> so that was G. I'll go a couple more times around. Give yourself a breather there. Here's G three four going down up down up. No accents yet. One and two. F on the up. C and one and two and three and four. Fourth bar one, two, F on the up, G on the up. Repeats and two and three and four and one. F coming on the up right here, up, down, C on the up. One and two and three and four and one and two. F on the up, do it one more time. G on the up, one and two and three and four and one. And two, F on the up, C on the up, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, F on the up. Good. Now with the help of the fabulous beat buddy, uh, the song comes in at 119 beats a minute. I'll take the edge off it and go, to, go down to 100 here. Just bring it down because that's pretty fast. Um, if we just practice that main riff together, straight down ups, no accents, no, per no percussive strokes yet. Believe me, you get it this far, the accents and the percussive strokes, they will definitely come. Okay, it's when we try to do it all at the same time that uh, things tend to go wrong. Here's the main riff at 100. One, two, three, four. F on the up. One, two, and three, four, and one, and two. F on the up. G on the up. Repeats there. F on the up, no accents yet. We'll put them in. F on the up, G on the up, two and three and four and one and two. F on the up, C on the up, one, two, and three and four and one. F on the up, G on the up, one, two and three and four and one and two. F on the up, one, two, and three and four and one and two. F on the up, G on the up. A uh, couple more. F on the up, C on the up. F on the up, G on the up. That's the repeat. F on the up, C on the up. F 
F on the up, G on the up. Top there. F on the up, C on the up. C on the up, F, F on the up, G on the up. Sorry. F on the up, C on the up. One more. Good stuff. So that's your main riff. Uh, that's your main riff without accents. That's just where the chords change. Okay, get that together. Come back and see us if that's giving you trouble for sure. Um, but you don't go on. You don't want to go on to step two until you're feeling pretty good about that. Uh, step two is to add this little mild, mild little percussive stroke that he's got. There's two ways we can go about this. Um, the first way, maybe a little easier, is uh, written as step two there on your details page. I am going to go uh, on beat two and beat four. I'm going to release the pressure of the chord. So it's going to look this way: down, up. I still do a downstroke, but I'm releasing the pressure on the left hand and just folding my fingers over a little bit so to get a, a dead stroke, a nearly dead stroke. So down, up, whack, down, up, whack, down, up, whack. Picture piano keys. You push them down, they make music. You let them up, they stop. Same kind of thing. Pushing down the strings and then folding over. You may have to you know, use your middle finger to choke out those open strings. So that on beat two and beat four, that's called the back beat. Uh, and there's a big accent there. I'm going to do this on the G, down, up, whack, up. Okay, down, up, whack, up, down, up, whack, up. That's the first bar, step two. Down, up, whack, up, down, up, whack. That's bar one of step two. One more time, three, four, G. Down, up, whack, up, down, up, whack, up. Now some bar two, much the same in the front part. Down, up. Whack, up, down. Now here's your F on the upstroke again. Here's your F on the up. And then we need, to, we need to do a percussive stroke, which would be your downstroke. So that's that X over top of that. Same thing, I'm just letting off the pressure. Maybe fold my hand over a little bit to choke out anything that might continue to ring. So uh, beginning of bar two in step two. So here's uh, bar two, step two, G. Down, up, whack, up, down. F on the up, percussive stroke on the down and then C on the up, a live stroke. Okay, so here's step two again, bars one and two. Down, up, whack, up, down, up, whack, up, down, up, whack, up. F on the up, whack, C on the up. Good, I'll go into bars three and four of step two here. Now you're on a C, down, up, whack, up, down, up, whack, up. Bar four, down, up, Whack, up, down. Here's your F on the up stroke with a now percussive stroke on the down and G on the up. And we're at the repeat of step two. So if you're having, you may have some strings ringing when you do that and you're trying to shut them down, you might get things ringing. He doesn't do a full stop on the recording. You may notice it's very subtle. Like that. Go for the full stop at first and then you could kind of temper it a wee bit and feather it maybe. Uh, just try to get used to it. It's a pretty common technique, so maybe you want to get used to that. Uh, I'm going to go again. Here is step two, round and round. Three, four, down, up, whack, up, down, up, whack, up, down, up, whack, up, down, F, whack, C, down, up, whack. Then read your sheet. Up, down, up, whack, up, F, up, whack, a G, top. F's to G here, whack, G, top of, of step two, F to C, whack, down, whack, up, down, whack, up, down. Yeah, so that, um, that you may want to stop tape. Uh, and definitely come back and uh, and pick it up from there. That's step two. Let's try that at 100 beats a minute here. 100 beats a minute, here it comes. One, two, three, four. One and two and three, four and one and two. Repeat. F, C. F, G, 
piece there. Have to see. One more. There we go. Good stuff. And again, stop tape there because that uh, that's a lot coming at you for sure. That is the main riff, I'll call it. Um, notice the our percussive stroke is at the same time as the snare drum on the recording, right uh, with the snare drum as your backbeat. And a lot of music, that's beats two and four. A lot of music is accented. A lot of the stuff that you enjoy listening to is accented on two and four, which at first may not come naturally. That's totally normal. You may have to really work at that for sure. Um, there's your main riff, and we'll do it at full speed in just a minute here. Um, now, the only real item of concern here is your chorusy bit. Instead of going to the F chord um, from the main riff, the very last time in the main, instead of going through that F chord, as he normally does, he goes to the D instead. The last time he plays that main riff, he goes through a D chord, which is your entrance to the chorus. And talk to you about this chorus. Um, the bracketed ones on these sheets are the quickie, are the quick ones. So watch out for that. Uh, those are the ones that we're just doing a quick up down on. So looking at the chorus on your song sheet, working on our night moves, I'm going to go E, uh, sorry D, and then E minor down D C. D, E minor. I'll stop in a sec. D, C, D, E minor, D, C, C major 7. Now get this. Um, I hear the E minor in the chorus happening on the downbeat. The C chord, I hear it definitely happening on the upbeat, but I'm definitely hearing that E minor on the down. Let me take it from the D heading into that chorus. E minor on the down. D, C on the up. D, E minor on the down, D, C on the up, D, E minor, I'll go around a couple more, D, E minor on the down, and D, C on the up, D, E minor on the down, D, C on the up, E minor on the down. Uh, you could hit the E minor on the up, I just hear it myself, I hear it happening on the down, no big deal. Um, that is your chorusy bit, and um, I'll try. I'll play that along with the recording here. I'll oh, show you with the beat, buddy. One, two, three. Down. D to C. D to E minor. D to C. On the up. D to E minor on the down. I'll go around again. D to C on the up. D to E minor. D to C. D to E minor on the down. D to C on the up. D to E minor, D to C. Yeah, and the, the C and C major seventh are bracketed, which means two beats on, this, on the last C in the chorus, and then two beats on the C major seventh. Just lift that first finger up. Subtle, but it's there. And then he's back to the main riff. He's right back to the start. There we go. Um, now as for parts, and we'll do a long play along here in just a second, uh, as for parts, the only other things you're going to run into, there's a bridge bit in there, uh, the bridge bit, uh, C major 7th, that's toward the bottom of your uh, song sheet, page 1, and just jump onto a C major 7th, this guy here perhaps, uh, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, and the wonder, 2, 3, 4, C, felt the light, major 7th, felt the lightning, then to an F, 3, 4, F, wait on the thunder, another F, D, wait on the thunder, one, and then G, stop here, yeah, and they stop dead, and for that section, just go straight down up, but put accents on two and four, I'll sit on a C major seventh here, I'll go C major seven, one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, uh, if you've done other one of, of guitar work videos, you're going to hear soft, and loud, soft, loud, soft, Putting that loud one on beats two and four where the snare is. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. So that could be your bridgey bit for sure. Uh, the breakdown. The other section here, the breakdown, of um, that you're kind of at the mercy of the singer. That's when things get very quiet. They've stopped on a G at the, at the end of page one. And then uh, I woke up last night to the sound of thunder, C major seven. Wait for the singer. You're at his mercy. How far off I began to wonder. G. I uh, started with some of the song, 1962, C major 7, in a funny E minor, how the night moves, to a C, 
when you just don't seem to E minor have so much to lose, your C coming. Strange how the knight moves. C, C major seven, autumn closing in G. There we go. And they stop and hold that. Now there's a neat little, I know whipping through this, it's gonna be a long video, but there's a neat little lead fill, it's very faint in there. You'll see that at the bottom of your details page. From there, he's gonna go. <laughs> somebody in behind doing that that's at the bottom of page uh, of your detail sheet and it starts with an open d string you'll see a zero written there open d and then a hammer zero to two and then open d again and then to the third fret of that low e do that again slowly here's your open d hammering zero to two on the a string open d and then to the third fret of that low e and he'll do it again number two and just before the main riff starts up again, you're going to hear this. Just before he leaves it, I'll do that again. Number three here is... And then he's into the main riff. The main riff. Nice little detail to have in there for sure. Uh, I would call that ornamental. It, uh, make sure you get through the basic song first. Get your, get your chords sorted out. Get your strumming sorted out. Let's do a bunch here. I'm going to do the verse and chorus uh, first at half speed and then at full speed. Okay, a verse and a chorus, full speed and half speed, or half speed and then full speed. That would make more sense, right? <laughs> so here it is at 100, and I'll go, uh, I'm going to go, let's say, six times through on the main riff, and then I'll hit the chorus. I'll scream it out, okay? Here it is. A one, two, three, four. If you're not up to the percussive stuff, don't worry about it. Just do it the old way. Number two. Number three. Number four. Number six, last one. I remember it's a D now instead. Here we go. D, E minor, D to C, on the up. D to E minor, on the down. D to C. D to E minor, on the down. D to C, major seven, major main rip. Round he goes. There we go. So that was that at a reduced speed of 100. I'll bring it back to 119 now for a full speed play along. And same thing, six main riffs, and then I'll do the chorus again. And uh, play along, rewind as many times as you need to. You can slow it down on YouTube too, go down to 75% if that's still too quick for you. But you may have to do some work in the area of just throwing a movie on and G, F, C. Make sure you're nailing that G, F, and C. Full speed, here we go. Six main riffs and a chorus coming. And one, two, three, ow! Instead, here we go. D, E minor, D to C, D to E minor, D to C, D to E minor. Let's do the chorus again. D to C, D to E minor. On the down. D to C, D to E minor, D to C. On the up. Major seven and major.
good stuff. So that is a full speed, 119 beats a minute. Uh, practice, play along. And uh, it's a, such a great song. Campfire Classic for sure. You gotta know this one. And it will open up your right hand. If that new, if that stuff was new to you, about changing on the up and those percussive strokes, you're definitely gonna want that for many, many other songs for sure. A quick word about the outro. After doing the main riff, they literally do it 10 times. It's 10 times on the way out. Bottom of page two here now on your song sheet. The outro as stated there is E minor straight. It just goes straight down and down. Nothing fancy. B minor for two counts of four. A minor gets one bar. A minor, C, and G. One, two, three, four. Stop. That's your outro. Hey, great. A lot of fun. Thanks again, Rick, for suggesting this one, encouraging me to do it, and, uh, and all your other questions from everybody else. I appreciate it. It's a lot of fun doing this. And uh, again, thumbs up really helped me on YouTube, and I appreciate all of that. There'll be a chance to subscribe here if you haven't done so already. If you hit the little bell notification, it'll tell you when new videos have come out. I hope that's been thorough and exhaustive, and uh, there's lots of uh, lots of contention about the strumming and all that, but I think this will get you there. Two steps, right? And um, thanks for coming back, guys. Go grab those song sheets at patreon.com slash guitar at work. There's a bunch of other stuff up there, too, that, that I think you'll enjoy. So I'll take you out with the main riff. Enjoy it, and we'll see you in the comments section below. Okay, bye-bye. One, two, three, bye.